Welcome to Significant TV, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and in the studio with me today is Kaisha Woods, CEO of Kit Media Agency. Kaisha, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Fran, for having me. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> now speak up. I know you are a bold, <laughs> energetic woman. So show us that showmanship and just oh. wonderful style of yours. Yes, we get into that. Thank yes. you. I yes. really appreciate okay, it, good. though. Yeah. It's wonderful. My pleasure. I'm excited for oh, being here. I'm excited good. to be here. Good. Well, today is all about significant stories, and I'd love for our audience to learn a little bit more about what got you into the business of entrepreneurship. Well, I know this is a cliche, but I'm a serial entrepreneur and mm -hmm. I, I'm just a serial entrepreneur. Um, you know, I've just been doing some reflections mm -hmm. and been having conversations and been doing some mentorship and I'm um, in the process of writing a book. So by the fall, I'll be an author. Excellent. Um, but, you know, I've been being asked, you know, what made you get into entrepreneurship as opposed to being corporate? Because I actually mm -hmm. I wanted to be a lawyer or a doctor or both, mm -hmm. honestly. Both. Um, okay. Yeah, because low I, expectations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm extremely a ambitious person, mm -hmm. so even my goals are a bit ambitious sometimes. That's fine. Go for um, it. But it's 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 it was just such an ironicism in how I got to start my path in entrepreneurship mm -hmm. because I actually w went to hair school to be to put myself through college mm -hmm. and then when I got out of hair school and I made a significant amount of money mm -hmm. what a doctor or a lawyer would make 10 years from now mm -hmm. I said wait a minute that means I can be my own thermostat mm -hmm. that means mm -hmm. I can be professional in any industry because I did not take being a hairstylist at that time is professional. Oh, and so that wasn't the path that I really chose because it was just a hobby. It mm -hmm. was a passion. It was something fun, mm -hmm. something that made me feel good because I love the success of others. I love to see people beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that's why beauty comes from the inside out, be mm -hmm. with Kaisha Wood. So that's mm -hmm. why later on my radio show, my television show, you know, evolved into that because that's what drove me to do the mm. things that I did. So when I see other people doing well, I want to just be a part of it. I want to see it come to fruition, you know. So it's like your wish is my command, you know. Excellent. <laughs> and I have seen that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you are definitely a producer and you're definitely a serial entrepreneur. Yes. Take us back. Mm -hmm. You you mentioned, I think that's an intriguing story. Mm -hmm. Beauty school originally was to help put you through college. Yeah. And then you made so much money mm -hmm. that you opened up your own hair salon. Yeah. At what age did you do that? I and was how 20. long did you have that business? Yeah, I was 20 going on 21. Okay. So... I want to take you back a little further Fine. To, to, so you see the evolution of mm -hmm. a serial entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So at like maybe age five or six, <clears throat> I never ate candy. I never was a candy eater. Mm -hmm. However, I started noticing like I would save like my fruit cocktails when I was little. Or if I see um, like if my mom would pack candy with my girlfriends, you know, after lunch, they would say, I want some candy or I want something to snack on, which is mm -hmm. normal. Right. However, I never was a big snacker, so I would say, oh, I have this, I have that. So after a while, I noticed that I might could make extra money. <laughs> <laughs> so I would sell, like, my fruit cocktails or mm -hmm. I would go buy a box of Alexander the Greats or Lemonheads mm -hmm. in the Boston Market. <laughs> And I would sell two for five cents. Now, you know back then they only cost us ten cents, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize I understood profit margin. Okay. You know? Okay. And then my mom was excessive. My mom, if she bought me a, a barrette that was an alligator, mm -hmm. they would have every mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. And she would buy me 20 or 30. I was not an excessive. I'm not an excessive person even mm -hmm. now. I like one of something it could be qualitative, and that's it. I don't need mm -hmm. all the rest. The rest is just mm -hmm. kind of junk to me. Mm -hmm. So I would sell, or I knew how to barter. If I like my girlfriend's headband, I would say, how about I give you four barrettes for that headband? Ooh, okay. So okay. I understood bartering. I understood profit margin. Did not know that at the time. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, I started, bra I, again, doing hair was just a passion of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I started braiding my girlfriend's hair, I guess, when I was about seven or eight, just mm -hmm. braiding it. But my first time I ever charged to braid hair, I put 
15 hours of time into this wow. girl's hair. And I don't know what alg algorithm I used, mm -hmm. but I came up with that she needed to pay me $100. Okay. And she did. Ah. I was 11 years old, oh, okay. but she That's was older than I was. Right? She was a teenager. Right. Mm -hmm. So she said, I think it's definitely worth it, 15 hours of time. Mm -hmm. But this is in the 80s, so that was a mm -hmm. significant mm -hmm. amount right. of money in, in the 80s, yes. right? So I started doing quite a few girls' hair in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, um, my, my, my god sister, she was a, a professional model mm -hmm. in Paris. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to sew in weaves. So she would go there every year and do it for the summer. And they would say, who is your hairstylist? She said, you won't believe it. <laughs> she says, my little sister. She wanted to fly me over to Paris wow. to do their hair. But my mom says, uh, no. I can't send her because my daughter knows how to make money. And she likes <laughs> to speak other languages. She may not come back. No, I can't do it. So it started from there mm -hmm. and then I went into working at a podiatrist so mm -hmm. I learned very early how to answer the phone speak mm -hmm. to clients and actually do a little bit of bill billing mm -hmm. at 12 okay and uh -oh. then at 13 I started working in a hair salon mm -hmm. and so from set from 13 to 17 before I graduated high school I worked mm -hmm. in a hair salon okay. so what led me to go to hair school is that I moved to DC for a year, I graduated when I was 17, mm -hmm. and then my cousin was a lawyer, mm -hmm. and she was um, becoming an adjunct professor mm -hmm. at H Howard, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to go to Howard because I wanted to follow okay. my my cousin's sure, footsteps, sure. and she's like at the time, you know, she knows Bill Clinton and all these people, so I was going to the White House and all mm -hmm. that kind of good stuff with her, and even now she's very good friends with Michelle Obama and and all kinds of people. So mm -hmm. she's always been a great inspiration to me. And so when I got there, I started filling out my paperwork and I could not get a student loan. Mm. And that was because my mom was further in her education mm -hmm. and she went full time. My mom's a pastor right. and she, um, she does awesome. She also owns daycares as well. Mm -hmm. So at the time, because we were under the same household for some oh. ironic reason, I could not get a right. student loan. Right. So I said, well, I couldn't, I also could not work in mm -hmm. D.C. because I wasn't set, I wasn't 18. 18 right, so, you know, right. it's a college college um, town, so they mm -hmm. would not allow me to get a job. Mm -hmm. So I moved back home and went through school. Wow. And what then, a great story. Yeah. And through school, story. I had an assistant three months in. Then I started mm -hmm. working in their salon downtown, which was across mm -hmm. from the Bellevue. Mm -hmm. So I, re I acquired yeah, a nice. professional clientele right mm -hmm right from the beginning because I was always there early. I started at mm -hmm. seven o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, my mom wakes up at five o'clock. So my mom says, be somewhere two hours early, not a minute late, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Mm -hmm. that my mom mm -hmm. does not, you know, she's really a staunch, staunch about that. And, um, and because even growing up in the church, um, I didn't look at TV a lot. So I, mm -hmm. I became extremely creative. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just read the Bible and so I, I really am into history and and knowing people and their culture mm -hmm. and who they are mm -hmm. so that translated very well into going into the salon business absolutely <laughs> I totally get it yeah and I think about just you know we're both members of the pyramid club yes um, and I think about how you take your energy your passion mm -hmm. uh, for others and helping others be mm -hmm. successful and how you've taken um, your ability to create events mm -hmm. and really enhance what the Pyramid Club is becoming. Yeah, and um, I and I think yeah. that's great because um, when my, when I had my spa downtown, I was at um, 12th and Vine. It was 4,000 mm -hmm. square feet, mm -hmm. and we had a workout facility. I had yoga and Pilates mm -hmm. instructors, um, and then I would have people come in because um, I like I said I cater to a professional clientele mm -hmm. and other entrepreneurs. So every Thursday I would do a wellness night. Mm -hmm. I would show them mm -hmm. how to do skin care, like just from their kitchen mm -hmm. and make body scrubs. And, and I always gave them positive affirmations. Like I would send out in emails and calls. I would have my re receptionist call mm -hmm. and, you know, and just give positive affirmations to them. So my clients, I had them literally for 15, 20 years because I know how to build and maintain those relationships and they started out in law school and med school mm. now they're judges and senators and all kinds of things so it translated Very well exciting. into me going into my 
consultant business. I was going to say, <laughs> we have spent a lot of time on the beauty business. Right. And I loved how you started out with, it's really beauty on the inside yes, out. Yes. And now you have a business, um, Kit Media Agency. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, and I'm going to take what's you. What's the focus? I'm going to take you a little bit back we on We have it. about two minutes. So okay. give us the, the crisp first. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going um, to take it back and then okay. over. Okay. Um, Kit Media Agency evolved from me being a, a hairstylist. Right. And then I went into radio for two years. Mm -hmm. um, so I was on radio. Then that evolved into a television show for five years, but my slogan was beauty from the inside out, you know, mm -hmm. be the best you that you can be. Mm. Um, so that was really important to me. So that's why I would talk to entrepreneurs and to homemakers and to CEOs and just ask them, you know, what their life was about. And then it just translated into enhancing mm. their lives and then enhancing sure. their businesses. And it just went into a whole um, um, different lane for me. Mm -hmm. So which led me into coming into doing working with ent entrepreneurs, entertainers, mm -hmm. politicians, civic leaders, mm -hmm. um, just <laughs> sports any stars. Sports stars yes, I right, do. I work right. with uh with from soup to nuts. Mm -hmm. I work with right. everyone because what I do um with the communication mm -hmm. and engagement mm -hmm. and connection Right. I can work with any business, any person, any individual brand because I'm a brand, they're a brand, and we just make brands better. You do. You do. <laughs> I'm almost afraid to ask this question because <laughs> I often ask people, when you, focus the, when you focus your energy, what happens in the world? For you, you've been focusing your energy. But when you think about the future, mm -hmm. um, the next few years... What's what's on the horizon for you? The next, really quickly, what's on the horizon? The next few years for me is that I'm kind of going to focus on myself because mm, my whole okay. 22 years of entrepreneurship, I focused on others mm -hmm. and to see the success of others. And people say, well, Kai, you should be here, you should be here. I was like, no, that was my foundation. Mm, and it beautiful. wasn't meant for that because I needed a story. Mm -hmm. So you can have a testimony if you haven't been tested, right? Mm, so... Yes. For me right now, I'm in the process of finishing up my book that I've had okay. for a long time. Okay. And in the, actually, I'm writing about two books right mm -hmm. now. So I'll be an author by this fall. Great. And then I'm going to reshoot my television show. Oh, and great. hopefully we can have great. you on your friend. Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. it's going to be... Um, you know, talking about a lot of great things of just mm -hmm. being who you are, mm -hmm. what makes you tick. So Terrific. basically, um, that's where I'm going, and that's the focus right now. Kit Media Agency, soon to be Kit Media Enterprises. Ooh, yeah, nice. Well, actually, nice. Kit Enterprises, and, okay. and Kit great. Media will be a subsidiary because there's a whole big vision that's coming. I love it. How mm -hmm. can people get in touch with you, Kaisha? Well, they can get in touch with me with my name, Kaisha Woods, mm -hmm. at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Mm -hmm. at Gmail or Kit Media Agency, Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter, at Gmail or kitmediaagency.com. I'm real Terrific. easy. Terrific, terrific. <laughs> You've got that branding thing. Consistency, <laughs> consistency. Consistency is the key. Well, that was my, that was my motto with right. being an entrepreneur, being consistent and persistent. You can't fail. That's a, that's a great way to finish up mm -hmm. our interview. And I suspect there'll be more to come. Yes. So thank you again. Thank you. I thank appreciate you, you being me. a guest. Yes. And so I'm Fran McNeil, your host of Significant TV. Obviously, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs <laughs> like Kaisha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.